Um, okay, folks, welcome to a, another Transforming Assessment, eAssessment Scotland online conference session. Uh, today is uh, September the 12th, um, well in most parts of the world it still is. Um, today's topic is about um, Finland's national matriculation system and their projects for a project for electronic examinations. Um, the speaker today is Matti Lato, he's the project manager in the matriculation examination board of Finland. So Matti, would you like to take over please? Yeah, thanks, thanks Matthew. Uh, so it's morning here in Finland, and uh, I've been having uh, enough time to get nervous about this. And uh, God, God, thanks, there are just uh, less people than I expected. So let's continue. I have like two backgrounds myself. I'm a PhD from education from University of Helsinki, I'm, I'm, I'm docent there still, and I've been working with the computers from the age of 10, so I have both, kind of both backgrounds, the education and, and uh, IT background, which is very good in this project. So um, in Finland we are just 5 million total Finns, and uh, one of the institutions in Finland is matriculation examination. So in the end of uh, school, like let's say 12th year, the upper secondary school, every pupil goes to matriculation examination. Officially, it's the the end test for the upper secondary, which is, which is voluntary. About a bit more than 50% uh, takes the academic upper secondary and there's a voc voc vocational schools for, for, for the others. And uh, this is final test for the upper secondary. And um, the meaning for, for the pupils or test takers is very, very huge. This is uh, counted um, to, to get to the universities. So it's very important for the test takers to get good results and, uh, in, in the test. And um, uh, for example, all the names who have passed the test are printed in the national newspapers. So it's a very big thing in Finland. So you can see some figures about the number of test takers. Uh, we are arranging the test in, in more than 400 schools or localities around Finland, so uh, we have plenty of, of uh, rooms to operate. And uh, the test is organized in a way that we are making the, preparing the questions and carrying on the uh, evaluation and the schools uh, and their principals are, are um, taking care of their local arrangements. So the test situation is controlled by the, by the schools. The board itself is a very small organ. We are just 20 people here, and uh, I myself in I'm working just for for this project, and I'm not taking part of the running the normal operations. And uh, we are uh, regulated by the laws in in Finland and financed by the test fees, and and directly by the government, as you can see. So uh, um, where we are in the, in the um, uh, education structure in upper secondary, so there's National Board of Education, uh, which is uh, right in the curriculum. The secondary schools are um, teaching according to the curriculum. Then there's exam running by us, run by us, and, and uh, we are giving the test results and, and Hopefully, there will be a feedback to to making the curriculum. This is the like typical feedback process, and and we are part of that. So, so what the schools are like, the schools are between a rock and a hard place in a way that that okay, they have to read the curriculum, which they should be teaching, but they are in uh, need of of knowing what 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 this test will be like. So. There's a huge interest in Finland at the moment about the uh, electronic tests. 
what kind of questions there will be, what kind of uh, IT skills you need in the in the test, and 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 so on. And this is just the reason that, as, as we all know, in education, the what what you measure is what you get, and and this is exactly what the schools want to do know right now. And uh, this is the high-level diagram of the our test process. It's not very untypical. First, you author the question question items. Then you have uh, to run the test situation, and uh, then there's a two-stage assessment. Uh, the first stage is taken uh, care by the school teachers, the local teachers, and the second one is uh, uh, is done by matriculation examination board. So, um, the most most of the questions are not uh, cannot be uh, evaluated by by programs or, or so there's no multiple choices at least not in a very large scale so most of the questions are small or larger essays and they are read by the two uh, specialists for, for giving the grades and and finally we deliver the data to to the Test takers and, uh, and teachers, media and researchers. And uh, what's going to change? Nothing, nothing, nothing really here. Uh, the high-level process will be will be very much the same in here. As the the main goal of the whole uh, project is to enhance the teaching or using use of the IT in the schools. So we don't want to really the, change the process of the of the running the test. We want to change the process of of, of uh, delivering materials and so on. But the main point is that, uh, as as I already said, that you get what you evaluate or what you measure. And currently, when the test is run by paper and pencil style the upper secondary schools are not very keen on on using IT in their teaching and this is something the Ministry of Education wants to change and, and uh, now there has been a IT training for decades in, in Finland and now they want to change this test and, and give more uh, if, uh, give more encouragement for the teachers to use IT in their teaching and uh, one uh, reason to change the test from paper and pencil based is that um, the test authors need for new possibilities to enrich their their skills. So currently in the paper based uh, exam, the authors they have um, uh, four sheets of paper for the questions and all the materials. So if you think that uh, you want to the test takers to read some some uh, articles for example and make a synthesis or whatever uh, answer based on, on on the material you can't have too large amount of data for them and this is something which we can change uh, also the use of, of uh, audiovisual material can be used and 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 when I started the project, a number of test authors said that okay, great. Now we are t starting to use. Uh, t now we have uh, the possibilities to develop our our test as we have wanted for for years. So the two big things is is to enhance the use of IT in the upper secondary and develop the matriculation examination to to. To move away from uh, rehearsing your memory and and and, and uh, recalling what what uh, directly you have learned, and but uh, to more more use uh, use your your knowledge to uh, to new things. Okay. Yeah, uh, the electronic typewriters comment is is that. Um, 
uh, when the teachers and 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 uh, the first comments from the schools were that that okay are um, are you going to change the test very much or or is it just that um, uh, we are changing like the method of typing in the answer so instead of writing by hand you get a possibility to edit your answer but but the test authors say that that this is not where we we are looking only for that they all also want to develop the questions and and uh, they want to change the change the questions as well to me be more requiring requiring for the students now here's the time schedule we are running so um, in typical IT projects um, the uh, phases can be based on local geo geography or, or institutions or what kind of these kind of organizational boundaries but in, in this, this project, we cannot use that kind of a, a approach as, as the, the, all the answers are assessed in the one group and, and so to say the, the pupils are put in, in order of their knowledge in that particular test. So if the pupils would have different kind of a, the other part would be using old school tests and the, the uh, some some students would take the electronic test. The it would be very hard for the assessment. So we have decided to start by small subjects, which are are uh, these tests are taken less than the, some others. So general language, geography, and philosophy are the first subject to start and uh, then French language, social sciences, and psychology follow. And, and gradually, by the end of the, by the 2019, all the subjects are electronic. And somebody uh, already not, noted that the mathematics and, and chemistry, and also the Russian language are the last subjects, and, and the reason is exactly that. Uh, we want to start with the easy ones with the less technical problems and, and uh, about the authoring the formula and, and so on. But we have already started to look for the applications to do this. And it, it, in, in a way it's, it's funny because the, the natural sciences are, are in a last, last in a row but the teachers are most active in the in the in the field so this 100% means that uh, before the um, fall 2018 the age groups are are not not like the the schools don't need the big tomb holes yet so they can arrange the test electronic test in in the classes because the number of of students is so so uh, low, and uh, the big, the whole 100% test taker number is is in the spring 2018. So uh, the schools have uh, a number of tests sort of um, try their setup, you know, not in a in a real situation. So where we are at the moment, we started. Uh, in the spring 2013, so we have been around for one and a half year. We have had now um, the developing team for for the systems uh, working for four months now, and the first set of of, of the program is already there. And uh, of course, before starting to author our own program, we've gone through the let's say 20 different applications and and some of them were really promising but at the same time they all lacked some core features 
which we need. And and from the Finnish perspective, the uh, test systems in the market are are so to say a bit 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 too simple as we have the tradition of, of these essays and, and mixing uh, drawings and, and text and so on. And um, most of the applications were, were for multiple choices and, and, and so on. And also, we have to arrange the test at the same time in all the lo localities. And, uh, and for example, if they are if there's a problem for one student or or problem for for the whole site the the pupils need more time to they have to given more time to make the answers we have to be prepared for the uh disab disables di disabilities and uh, and uh, for the large variety and 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 so on so technically even the most promising systems were good for us, and uh, we decided to take the rocket, rocket road of developing the system from the scratch. So, from the school's perspective, this is the sort of flow, uh, flow diagram was going to happen. Uh, we get the registrations from the school's administration software, as as we get now. And um, then we have the isolated area, the, the bluish, grayish area with the devices and offline test servers. So uh, the first idea, of course, for the IT people is that we put the test systems to the cloud and then, then the old test takers contact the cloud servers and, and everything is fine. But um, at, at, at the moment, the Finnish uh, school's IT infrastructure is not ready for that. So we would have had tremendous work with the uh, secure internet connections in, in all the schools and localities. We are running the test, for example, in hospitals if, if uh, needed. There are some tests take, taken from the prison, prisons and so on. So there's a uh, large variety of, of localities and running the test from the cloud wasn't an option at the moment. We are we are surely approaching that but this is not reality. So what we have is that we are having an offline test server in the gym halls. Uh, of course well they are mirrored so there's actually two test servers but um, the registration data and the questions are uh, encrypted and, and loaded to the test servers. And then when the test is running, the devices are connecting to the local server. So it's, it's, if the internet is collapsing, our matriculation examination just works. And then um, the assessment system is that 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 will be in the cloud so the teachers who are taking care of the first phase and and the MIB sensors who are taking care of the second phase they are using the web based assessment system and here's the sort of more technical flow diagram so first we have two in the in the upper left we have two sources of information we have the test takers and item item items from the item authors so they are encrypted and sent to the item player which is running in the offline test server an item player is is showing the questions and and receiving the answers uh, the answer are, uh, answers are moved to the document database uh, and, and which is used for the assessment. We are not quite, quite there yet to say that what, what's the protocols here, but uh, I'm not sure it's, it's not the key issue right now. And um, 
finally we get the results and uh, which are transmitted back to the school's administration systems and and the externals for the for the pupils and and the teachers as well. And if I recall correctly, this slide shows that where we are right now. So the first phase was to run a very very simple test in 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 one school. So we arranged uh, a course exam with a very simple item player. Actually the item player was running in, in the uh, test takers own workstations and the answers were recorded to the USB sticks. And the second phase is to separate the a test taker's device and the offline test server. So, in a way, we are running the, we are providing the schools to and the, and the teachers a way to make their exams, course exams, with a cloud-based item authoring, and then they can make the package for 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 the offline test server in the schools. We will provide the software for this offline test server. So it's a live USB as the end user device. I'll, I'll come to that later. And then the answers can be put back to the assessment application. So effectively, we have the, we are trying to produce the basic process by the end of the year and, and for the teachers to use in their teaching. And this is good for, for the teachers as they uh, gain the knowledge of what kind of system it will be and we get a lot of uh, test, uh, test users as the schools and, and, and teachers are very keen, keen on, on um, trying the software. This is very different from the IT projects I've been used, working before. Well, it's typical that you don't get any test users, but here I, I in this project I, I get emailed maybe once a week from the, some pr principal that have you done already something shippable and that we could use. So uh, Rebecca asked that uh, if the teachers are using the same software, at the moment yes, so they have an instance of, of the software which will be in the, in the cloud, but of course when we are making the, the very hush-hush uh, uh, final questions, we are using completely different environment for the um, test authors, so they will be mixed. But by uh, supplying the test of by supplying the, the item authoring tool, we got a lot of feedback that if it's easy to use and so on, so it's it's very profitable for us to to get the, uh, give it give it to all the teachers. Rebecca also asked that that how are the teachers trained to use the possibilities of this system? Uh, we the first things when the teachers are asking uh, about the training is that have you taken a course to use Facebook, for example, or, or Twitter? And, and of course, we see no hands raised because the current systems, IT systems, or, or the, perhaps the users are expecting that the systems are very easy to use. Nobody takes any courses or, or, or so on. And this is our, our key point to make everything so easy that it's, you don't need a course. Of course, we are using videos to ex explain that um, at the moment, for example, how to build the test network and, and, and so on, and those will be used as well. Uh, in the first year of the project, we met 4,000 people, and, and comparing to the number of upper secondary teachers, which is 8,000, we are meeting a lot of people to get feedback. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and of course, to tell about what we are doing. So I think when we have this um, item authoring 
tool and the system ready, most of our appearances in, in the schools will cover the how to use that. So we are changing the changing the message all the time. So what will be there? Uh, what kind of uh, or what does it take to build a um, test locality? So that was the first question I was asked when I was I had been working here for one one month. That okay, we have to know and. Um, of course, you have to have uh, electricity and you have to have some kind of a network. And uh, actually, it was quite easy to produce a manual for for the schools and and um, and technical people in in the schools and municipalities to to build a test network uh, or, or the test localities. Uh, what we don't know is that what kind of local area network can be used in the test. So we are, are thinking that is it possible and secure enough to run a wireless network in the test situation. And, and when I'm talking about the wireless, I don't mean the or I don't mean the the regular wireless networks. They can be in in the schools. So. Uh, what we need here is a total different level of, of um, equ equipment and and, and um, capacity. But uh, in, in in general, we run a uh, set of, of field tests, and we even uh, used uh, uh, scrambling or, or disturbing uh, in the for the radio traffic to find out that, that what kind of possibilities to uh, a hostile person would have to to um, to, uh, to to prevent the students of, of making a test. So uh, this is a uh, decision we have to take uh, or, or make. Uh, in the next month, and uh, and uh, all I've seen is, is that everybody else has uh, has problems making their mind as, as I personally have because um, there are problems in the wireless, but uh, there are advantages as well. So there's lively discussion in the chat area and. Uh, um, I'm trying to sc scroll up that if there's direct questions to from me, but uh, appears to be none at the moment. So, if you have any questions, please please use the talk button or, or write something. Uh, Max, yes. Okay, so if people would like to ask a question, put use the up hand symbol, and then we can get a number. Uh, Rebecca, would you like to speak into your microphone? Just press the talk button in the top left hand corner. Uh, hi, Rebecca. We can't hear you yet. Uh, you need to press the talk button in the upper left hand corner. Or you, you might need to. You might need to run the audio. Right, so. I've got a talk button now, I think. Can you hear me? I'm Excellent. Better. Yeah, yeah, we can. Oh, good. Uh, we were uh, apparently in violent agreement. Um, I, I asked a question about the training of the paper centers. Um, I was quite surprised. I, I, I understand that it's easy if it's, if it's very uh, accessible if you make it uh, very easy, like Facebook. But our experience is that it's actually quite difficult to get paper centers to understand how to use more complicated things than just this is the, this is the uh, stimulus, write an essay, or this is the normal kind of question, write the answer. So as soon as you want to do something more uh, complex uh, or even think about why you want this particular video as a source, um, you actually need to train the paper setters quite a bit. And it doesn't, I, I can't see that in this. Um, presentation. Yeah, thanks. 
Thanks. That was an excellent point, and and that's sort of our. Um, and now I'm not hearing it. Oh, there. Okay. Uh, so this is related to one of our our key problems here in Finland at 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 at, at the moment. So. We are uh, at the matriculation examination board. We are just just making this one test. The, the job of the bureau is is to just making the evaluation. And then there's uh, different organizations uh, who are responsible of of um, of the teacher training. So. Um, Although we all have known that uh, we will start the project and we it has a known uh, schedule, what uh, what has surprised our our uh, colleagues is that uh, what kind of training is required. So what you what you said said about the the need for for pedagogical training about uh, uh, how to use the electronic testing and, and uh, what kind of new possibilities you have there. You are absolutely right. The teachers at the moment are not asking that kind of training, but they are asking that what kind of tricks we have to train the, the pupils to, to pass the test. So this is the first low low level question. And of course the higher level is that, that what kind of IT use there should be in the upper secondary. And uh, if you recall the diagram when, when there's these three players in the field, so we could, could have done better in, in uh, planning beforehand about the, the steps in the training. Any other questions? Trevor is asking about securing wireless uh, from the hackers. Uh, well, there, there's um, the problem in, in the wireless that you you need a different a bunch of of different actions to make it harder to hack the the. Uh, network operations. So um, there's radio related problems and, and there's uh, uh, data or TCP IP related problems and uh, uh, there's a massive amount of, of actions can be taken but at, at the end of the day there is still possibility to like to jam the radio radio uh, transmissions or, or use a larger, more efficient transmitter to, to make noise to the channels and this would jam effectively the wireless test. But uh, how easy this is, is it, it depends in the, different, in, in the different factors. The type of the building and, and surrounded, surrounding area and, and, and so on. So it, it's very lucrative, but they are very different, very much questions. Uh, Iris is asking about the students' um, workstations. If I recall correctly, this is the next slide. Yes, exactly. So, so when I when I got to the job interview, the, one of the first issues was that that okay. The government or the municipalities can't have money for the, the test takers' devices. How would you solve the problem? So, uh, well, now we are talking about to bring your own device in everything and everywhere, and this is the solution we have to take. And and from the my perspective, as we have the four four hundred different test localities. Um, it would be even impossible to have a uniform 
installations in all, all the workstations, even if they would be provided by the municipalities. So we have def uh, decided to use the USB live Linux and the test takers are booting to that, that system when they are starting the test. And this is the for the test takers and the schools at the moment, this is a very big question mark that how it can be done. As as for those who have tried this, you, you already know that you might may have to make changes to your BIOS or UFE settings and and most of the computer users don't even know that there's some things in their computers as, as BIOS or UFE. And there's, they have no idea that the computer can be boot to different operating systems than, than what the God made it to be when it created the, the, the Windows or Apple or whatever. So, uh, the the students can bring their own devices and the, of course this presents um, other other um, problems for the IT security but um, this is the best we have figured so far and and this is the way we are are going uh, there's a lot of iPad users in Finland and they are asking that that when the test can be taken or or done with the iPad and at, at the moment we don't have the iPad support in our our uh, our, our list of, of things to be done so uh, they have to use some other devices and in, in taking the test so as Matthew is is uh, writing the URL so our approach to the booting problem is to make the test uh, operating system it has been around for a year now and we are developing that constantly and, and uh, the idea is that the schools and the pupils should should well enough in a well in advance to to try the booting before going to the test and as we have learned from the schools they are planning to use the USB environment in their course test to make sure that that they are capable of, of running the test in the exams in the in the schools so we are accept, ac accepting both the own devices, students' own devices, and uh, and the school's devices. The offline test server is technically very equal to the end user device, so we will supply a USB Live, which contains the the test software, and uh, that that can be made sort of public. So there's no secrets in that that package. The secret package contains the questions and the test takers' identities, and uh, and of course the answers are are uh, should be secu secured as as well. So there, there's secret data coming in and out, but the uh, basic uh, operating system for the offline test server can be delivered delivered publicly. Now, here's a slide for those who are interested in the uh, exam server technology. So we are using Node JS to for for the programming and uh, in the backbone there's Postgres PostgreSQL database server and uh, the students are effectively starting the browser in their own devices and, and most of the exams or the questions can be answered by, by just the browser. But in, in other cases we are providing 
liver office and, and different kind of a drawing picture uh, software applications a mind map application is is uh, should be added to to the set of software and and uh, the the idea is to provide the same kind of software for the test takers they are using in the in the teaching so um, we are providing um, a CAS calculator from Texas Instruments and Casio to to write the mathematics answer as well. So uh, uh, when the, we are driving the effectively driving the the teaching in the upper secondaries, we would like to use uh, and be very open in in the applications we are providing to make sure that. Um, to make this bidirectional, the, the selection of the software. But, um, but what I've heard from the schools is that they are, are starting to use this matriculation examination board software in their teaching as, and, and, uh, and, and sort of copying it directly and, and not communicating too much that what kind of uh, requirements they would have or ideas they would have but I, I think we are in the road of developing the, the communication here so here's some schedule the question about the wireless network will be done uh, in the next next month by operations manual we need a, a uh, we mean the description of the, how to build the network and, and how to run the test. This is something which will be developed by the schools or with the schools as, as how we are expecting a lot of feedback from, from the different solutions to the, to the problems the, there will be in the, in the different kind of localities. Uh, as, as, as I already told that the first shippable version will be shipped to the schools by the end of the year and uh, effectively effectively the test system will be will have to be ready by by the end of the year 2015 as we have to freeze the basic functions well ahead before the, the first test in, in September 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 2016. So here's the list of things we are asking schools to do right now. So first thing is to make sure that you have at least a plan for the test localities. You don't have to have the the big bigger biggest locality you are using at the moment for running the normal test ready by the end. Uh, September 2016 but you have to have plans for the smaller rooms you have to have plans to to and policies about the devices you are going to use in a teaching and in the test they may not be the same machines and um, in in general you have to raise the level of, of daily use of IT in the upper secondary schools. So, Gisi, are you asking about the point three in this slide, how to raise the the use? So, what what our um, so to say our job in this whole big picture is to tell what kind of things it's possible to use or, or to do in the, in the test. What kind of different questions uh, the, the test authors are, are writing? And uh, it's um, then the schools and the teachers have to figure out that, uh, okay, what kind of change of the teaching we need here and, 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 and plan the change. So in, in Finland, the teachers are very autonomous. So we are our, our tradition is not to tell the teachers what to do. So the tradition is, is that we have a 
very highly trained teachers and and uh, letting them to decide the teaching methods and and uh, in the primary even the uh, curriculum are, are written by the schools themselves so so what we can provide from the from the board is knowledge about and, and information about the test and uh, we are also running a, a program to make trainers for, for for the teachers to get more knowledge about the the test situation itself and uh, we also have active plans of, of um, supplying the or, or investing more more to the teacher training as as the teachers now are aware that they need something and, and it's it's getting more concrete that what what the exact need is so one year ahead we didn't even know what kind of questions the test authors will be using what kind of a, how they interpret the the curriculum and and, and uh, perhaps what kind of a requirements there could be for for the upper secondary students so um um the matriculation examination board in Finland has been traditionally quite far and um, so to say in the ivory tower and uh, in this project we are trying to be very close with the schools so in order to get the feedback and, and develop the good regulations good systems and and uh, and we have to have, try to have a big ear for the schools as as the project staff if you don't count the the technical people we are we are four people and two of us are constantly visiting the schools and we are trying to multiply the number of people by the end of the year so so to get a lot of feedback and and uh, and uh, make sure that uh, everybody knows what's going on and, and no schools are left behind uh, a lot of teachers in upper secondary they want to be very sure as the the exam is very important for the uh, students and the teachers as well so the situation where, where we are now is that we really don't know what kind of mathematics exams there will be in 2019 it's very um, it makes the some uh, some teachers very uh, frightened and, and and even annoyed as the tradition has been that we are giving very clear regulations uh, well enough uh, before for changes come and and the time schedule we have here from the Ministry of Education is, is so that we, we cannot use that approach here so uh, we are um, we are trying to concentrate to the next steps they are and um, and uh, trying not to worry about those we don't see yet see yet to solve the problems first and uh, and work together okay that was the last one um, okay thanks Matty um, yeah um, please ask more questions folks um, either type them into the text chat or you may put up your hand I'm going to progress the slides one more so that there's also a feedback link that people can click now the link on this slide is actually a clickable link because I had to go and add it in after uploading the slides. Um, but the home page for the Digby project I've put into the text chat there. Uh, Matty, if you can send me any other links to sub-sites that you might uh, have, that would be good. Because what I will do is I'll put all these links onto the um, 
onto the recordings page. Um, we will also publish the uh, chat log on the recordings page as well. So any questions, folks? See a couple of people typing in there. Okay, thanks, Rebecca. Okay, Martin, I see, is typing something. Possibly something will pop up shortly. So Martin's asked a question down there, why did you use the uh, Node.js? Um, the, the first first selection was, of course, in the architecture that are we are we going with the open source stack or, or using the some commercial stack, for example, what Microsoft would we provide. And and as we have minimum number of, of 800 servers around Finland, the, the use of open source stack was very lucrative. And uh, we have a very similar project in, in Holland when, where they have been running electronic tests for 10 years now in a very similar um, uh, setting that it, it's very high importance for the test takers and, and, and so on. And they are running their second version of the test system or, or building it right now. And uh, it was very surprising that parallelly when we met those those people, uh, we, we learned that they have made some similar selections for the same reasons that they have also the offline test servers possibility and, 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 and so on. So why Node.js specifically? We wanted to have have some some languages which has a broad a number of, of developers capable of, of, of authoring, and we decided to use something based on Java because it's the different flavors deri uh, uh, derived from the Java. They are very easily adopted if you have the Java background, which is very common in Finland and, and other parts of the world at, at the moment. So we have we have plans to use Scala in, in some environments, but no JS and, and some uh, libraries used for the user interface, which I don't I don't know. I'm not involved with the technical work here, so they they were were chosen. Um, Matthew, it's interesting you mentioned the, the Holland one. Um, are, could you send through the information about that? I'm interested to follow up what they're doing as well. Um, too bad I, I, I haven't been in contact with them, them uh, for a long time. But uh, but uh, it was surprising how, how similar we, we are, small countries, small nations, and, and similar uh, high stakes test and, and and sort of we even even tried to uh, figure out uh, if we could assimilate their their software, but uh, too bad it didn't have the, some of the key features we used. Okay, thanks, Rebecca. Would you like to uh, speak? You're welcome to go. Yes, uh, being from the Netherlands, I thought this was a good opportunity to speak. Um, it is true that uh, there has been uh, ver there have been various attempts at uh, and 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 some successful to do uh, electronic testing. However, as far as I know, um, it is as I said uh, not as easy as it seems. Um, I'm not entirely sure about 10 years, but maybe it is. Uh, they have been doing it for a while, um, but only for a particular part of the secondary school, which is mostly the vocational part. And as far as I remember, most of it was initially all of it was multiple choice. Uh, I do believe they are doing something less um, simple now. Um, there was uh, an issue 
three years, four years ago, where actually during the high stakes end of year testing, um, it turned out that even in the developed country, the Netherlands, the online uh, connection was not good enough and many, many failures. So uh, I'm not entirely sure where they are now, um, but if people would like to know, I think uh, CITO, C I T O, has something on the website. They state that 60% is online. I can tell you that might be true for <laughs> for uh, uh, the vocational stuff, but not uh, for the rest of the secondary education. So that covers about 50%, perhaps. Uh, so yes, uh, thank you, Aris. That is the right uh, website. Um, so uh, if people want to know more, Iris and I are both in the Netherlands, and CITO, it, we, might, we all now have the website, so it might be interesting to follow that up. Okay, thanks Rebecca, that's very informative. Um, anybody else would like to question, because we're just about on the hour, we are on the hour actually, uh, 6 p.m. over here in Eastern Australia. Um, and obviously time for most people to get off to work over in Europe. So um, I think what we do is we can stop the recording and um, say thank you very much to Matty. Um, it was great having you and very interesting to hear about the rather sophisticated plans that Finland has got underway.